Hello ladies and gents, Bushman here and welcome back to my channel and today we'll be taking a look at the new developer update and what we can expect next week. I will also be sharing a quick teaser of the toboggan base, The Vault, which I've just finished building and I'm currently editing the video which will hopefully be released tomorrow, but you'll have to stick around until the end for that. Just to add, the ultimate solar base hasn't been raided yet so I have no footage to share with you, but I have been trying my best to get it raided. That being said, ladies and gents, let's not beat about the bush and jump straight into it. So first of all, I'd like to share my thoughts on the experience so far with Last Oasis and I will start by saying I'm absolutely loving it. As you will have probably realised by some of my channel art, I have my sights set on New World, the new MMORPG. The original concept of New World was that of a survival based MMO with a main focus on PvP and high stakes gameplay, but if any of you have been following the game, you will know by now they have changed their direction, which in short has left me disappointed and no longer very interested in the game. Now enter Last Oasis, which only hit my radar a few days before launch, and after a bumpy week of server problems, I quickly became hooked on the game. For a pre-alpha build that we're currently playing, I have to say it's one of the most polished early access games I've ever played. Yes, there are a few bugs and performance issues, but I could continue to play this game as it is for the near future. This is by far the best PvP survival game I have played, and as a huge fan of the genre, I've played them all and nothing has captured me quite like this. The PvP battles have been exhilarating, both small scale and somewhat large scale, and the game in general has been an enjoyable grind. Yes, there is actually such a thing, I didn't think there was either. When I say grind, it, has, it hasn't really felt like a grind as you can look for your materials from the source or engage in combat with the Rupus which gives you a bit of everything and they can be challenging at times especially solo if you're fighting a group of them. The real grind for me is base building, I'm currently farming clay at the moment which has been a bit of a slow process and the 200 panel base for the toboggan walker which I have just built did feel a bit grindy but so it should. I like how bases are tough to grind for as the harder you work on it, the harder do you make it for people to successfully raid you? The easiest way I've found to get things quickly is none other than engaging in some PvP and we've had some very successful raids and fights as a small group and defeating enemies on a 2 to 1 ratio on many occasions which in turn saved ourselves days of farming. I found a really nice balance within the game as I play solo for half my time and I play as a group for the other half and I've been efficient in both. One of the main complaints I have seen about the game is zigging and not being very solo friendly. While this is somewhat true, one thing I would say to solo players and small groups is there are plenty of things you can do to avoid the zigs. The number one thing which will be your downfall is map selection. Most of the zigs are currently around the east of the map, so north, south and west are a lot less hostile as smaller groups own those territories. You can still enjoy hard maps without taking a major risk as there are plenty of hard maps that haven't got a point of interest and you will find that Zergs are not interested in those maps. Here you will find small scale PvP and in general friendly players who are probably in the same boat and move there to get away from the giant clans. I love the PvP and try my best to be involved in it as much as possible, but there's a difference between enjoying PvP and challenging yourself to being an absolute toxic arsehole and killing anyone who crosses your path in huge numbers. Thankfully, not all Zergs operate like this, but a good indicator is if you join a server and the owning clan is trying to police that territory, if that is happening, move out as they will constantly try and limit the way you want to play the game. That includes having fair fights and raiding other players. So onto the update now and these devs are just on fire. So potentially by the end of next week we're going to be seeing a lot of changes, bug fixes and improvements to the game and some fantastic news for small groups and solo players as they've addressed the problem of zerging. So the first point then is exploits and bugs. They mentioned that they have banned over a thousand players for cheating and exploiting, which is always good news, and they've fixed the number of exploits which allow players to undermesh under buildings or build in rocks and so on. The other big point here was people hiding their attack stances by crouching. They're also adding a feature that will allow you to report a player whilst inside the game, and we'll be releasing a code of conduct to make it clear what is exploiting and what is not. The next point then is performance and lag. They've officially addressed the performance issues during combat which was at the top of my priority list and I'm really happy they've made improvements to this during their testing. 
They say the test they are currently doing has showed significant improvements to FPS stability and they have also fixed rubber banding issues and animation bugging whilst using the grappling hook. Next then is Scorching Sun and private servers. They have stated within the next two weeks the Scorching Sun, which is the decay timers, will be added along with private server hosting. I'm personally going to be looking into creating a build server when this is released. I've never attempted anything like this before, so if any of you out there would like to get involved in something like this, give me a shout on my Discord server, the link's in the description. Next point then is the zigging problem. So this is a very interesting one, and I have to say, very unexpected. They state that they have been brainstorming solutions to make the game more solo friendly and have come up with a potential solution. This will be incorporating oases with different clan size limits which allow everyone to travel between best suited tiles depending on their group size. So does this mean Zergs will actually have to fight other Zergs rather than ally with them? This should be interesting. Finally then, they go on to talk about more improvements and fixes, and this point that is huge for me was that they're going to be making the crab and the blue thing, also known as Okam and Nair, have habitats instead of roaming around, and they will guard the habitat instead. I hope that means people will stop kiting the crab around the map, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. So then ladies and gents, very promising news, and hats off to the devs for keeping us informed. Let me know what you think of the recent news in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new here. As promised, here's the teaser from the new build, The Vault, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.